Our scripture reading this morning will be from John's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. Jesus is in the upper room with his disciples uh, just a couple of days before his ignominious yet triumphant death. And he has just told the disciples that he's going to have to go away and that they would not be able to come with him. No wonder their hearts were troubled. For the first time, they would be without their indomitable leader and facing uncertain times ahead. So Jesus uh, attempts to console them. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I am going there intentionally to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Good morning. morning. Like they say in Spanish, buenos dias. Um, I uh, I think there's something very important in the back. But right there is a clock. (laughs) I better be careful. I'm going to watch that clock so, uh, you know. You know, we Hispanics have a little situation, you know, with the time. So, uh, but anyway, it's a wonderful day. Amen. It is. And you know why it's a wonderful day? Because we are here. Amen. This is the best place right now in the world, the church, Amen. friends, family, together here in Mesa, Church of Christ, to praise God. Um, I pray that my brother's uh, church wife is much better today. You know, we were going to divide half and a half, but, uh, you know, you know what happened with his wife with the Aliyah sickness? So now I got the blessing to uh, preach this morning. Um, Pressing forward with positivity. That is what my brother Chuck wanted for for us to uh, preach about. It's a new year. 364, because today is the second one. Um, Remember God's people in Egypt? 420 years, I believe, as a slave. Wow, terrible. They had no right, suffering, a lot of pain. Family, children, terrible. Many of them die. Well, Edison, what what you are saying has to do with positivity? (laughs) Okay. With no possibility to change their situation. I mean, 420, how can they change that? Terrible. If they were looking in the future, they didn't see anything good because they were a slave. So nothing good for them even in the future. But God came down. Amen? Amen? And he gave them what we know as the promised land. And the land that were there living They were a slave. No chance, nothing. But God promised them a promised land, another land. A land that flows with milk and honey. Sweet stuff. Because in Egypt, they didn't have anything sweet. But now God has given them a promise. I'm going to take you from here. I'm going to take you to a promised land so you can eat, drink, Milk and flavoring, but honey is so sweet. What a wonderful change. 
seeing something positive in the future. Because what they're living right now, nothing good. So the Bible says in Exodus 3, 8, only the first part. Exodus 3, 8, the first part. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out to a land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. When they left, they left the pa their past. All those that I mentioned before, pain, suffering, death, etc. But they left with a lot of happiness now. Free from that life. Happiness, free. Pressing forward now, like the sermon said, the title, with a lot of posi positivity to the promised land. And we know they went through this terrible desert. And we know what happened in the desert. And of course, without God, they will not have any chance in that desert. But God came down again. Remember that? Gave them food, water, a cloud. During the morning when the sun was so strong, a cloud to protect them. That's important. Protection. And at night, a fire. God provided everything they needed. In those years, according to what I read in the, our bulletin, could be only 11 days. But it took 40 years because of their unbelief. So even though walking in those, uh, in that desert, brother, life was not going to be easy for them. But God was among them. And he protected them during those years. And we know that only those, this is important, that trusted God and had a positive attitude were the ones who entered the promised land. Attitude, positive. Because those who were complaining all the time didn't enter. And you know what happened? Many of them died in that terrible desert. But God took them from that life, so miserable, no chance, no hope, to a promised land. And while they were walking in that desert, as I said before, he also protected them, brothers and sisters. That was God's people. But what about us today? What about you? What about me? What is God doing today for you and for me? According to Romans, we all sin. We all sin. They were a slave physically, also spiritually, but all of us were a slave of sin. No chance. We didn't know God. No future. Nothing positive. Sounds like what the Jews had in Egypt. No chance to change our future. But remember that God came down and blessed them incredible and promised, and gave the promised land. So Jesus now came down to save us, to deliver us from our sins. Not physically, but spiritually. Now we are safe. Now we have promised land to you because he promised us, as the brother read, a land much better than the one in Palestine. You know, um, yesterday was a new year. Uh, Pedro, por favor. 
You know, we have different traditions. And because this is a new year, I know last year we passed through pain, physically talking, suffering, situations. A brother this morning just shared with me something terrible that happened to his family in another country. It's just life here. Sometimes we have problems with neighbors. Sometimes we have problems among us. I'm teaching about uh, how to resolve conflict between brothers, because that happened to us. But in Venezuela, the uh, 31st, we do something very interesting, brothers and sisters, that apply good to what I'm teaching this morning, or preaching. This is Pedro, Hello. family. Pedro is from Venezuela, with his wife, Berenice, and they are fixing their papers right now, and we are, they are very blessed. But we get together in the family, each family, and when we are waiting the 12 o'clock. When the 12 o'clock comes, this is what we do in the beginning with all our families. Feliz Año Nuevo, hermano. And we do this. We give a hug and do this. Okay, Feliz that's it. Feliz Año. Okay. Gracias, Pedro. Sí. Eso es lo que hacemos. That's what we do. But not only that, after we finish hugging our families, we step out of home. We go into the streets. You know, in Venezuela, people walk everywhere. And in that day, after 12 o'clock, everybody came out from their homes. Could be your friends, could be your family, could be your enemy. Could be somebody that you have problems, troubles before, yeah. But in that day, in the new year, you get out of the house, and anybody that you see walking around, you know what you do? You say, Feliz Año Nuevo, and you give a hug, even though it's your enemy. <laughs> yeah. Everybody. Things are forgotten. Problem before, gone. It's in the past. It's a new year, brothers. This is a new year for Mesa Church of Christ. It's a new year for you. Problem happened before, situation happened before. This is in the past. Like the Jews suffering in Egypt. Now they are going to a promised land. Like us. A slave of sin. But now we have been delivered by Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So forget what happened in the past. This is a new year. Like Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow, worry about today. Amen? So let's forget that and press forward with positivity. That word positivity is kind of hard for me, so I have to be careful. <laughs> so, but while we are here, um, love, uh, um, uh, loved ones, First Peter 2, remember what I said that not everybody that left Egypt entered the promised land because of their behavior, attitude, now, Peter tells us today, brothers, 1 Peter 2, 11. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wave war against your soul. This is what Peter said, brother. While we are walking in this earth, walking to our promised land, Let's abstain from sin. Because that is going to destroy our soul and we are not going to go into the promised land. But remember that uh, as God was with them in the desert, today Jesus is walking with you with you, with you, and with me. Amen? Amen? He said, I will be with you always. What else do we need, brothers? Sometimes we let the world and the stuff and the problems to let us to forget that we are safe. 
We have so much wonderful thing in the future. God knows the future, amen? amen. But he, know, he has given us so many promises, and He is guiding us to the promised land. If we die, we are going to be in the promised land. Think about that, brother. You are safe in Christ. We are safe because of Jesus' death. We have a promise. Land is waiting for us over there. Now I'm going to read to confirm what I'm just saying about the promised land. John 14, 1 through 6. John 14, the, 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 the scripture that the brother read. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Let's, I will say the word, let's drink this. I'm sure you've read this before in many ways. I'm preaching, but I want you to drink this. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do you believe in God? Believe also in me. That is what Jesus says. The God that delivered you from Egypt, from this slavery, now he's saying, yeah, you believe in God, now, now believe in me. Because I'm going to deliver you from sin. Is something positive or not? Yeah. You know how terrible it is? Those who have lived uh, such a terrible life in the past, that they didn't see any future or any hope, and now you are here safe. What a wonderful blessing. Amen? Amen. Praise God for that. Amen. My father's house has many rooms. And you know what that means. <laughs> wow. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you. Promised land. That is my promised land. Amen. My hope is not that. My hope is Jesus. But my promised land, your promised land, is right here. And who is fixing it? Who is building it? What a better constructor than Jesus. <laughs> and if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me that you also may be there where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Of course, they didn't know. You know the way. You know the place where I'm going. And, and Thomas said, uh, said uh, Lord, um, uh, we don't know it. Where do you go? So how can we know the way? I have been in Christ for 42, 43, 44 years. And as many of you lost when I was young, uh, never went to church, even Catholic, never. Uh, never, nobody talked to me about God, Jesus, Bible. What is that? Lost. No future. No chance, nothing. Until Jesus came to my life, as well in your life. If that is not for you, what else? And here I am, this young man with no future, with no promise of anything, here by God's grace, preaching to you guys. Yes, what a promise. What a wonderful change in your life. Positive in my life as well in yours. And those that still are not in Christ, think about that. Who can change your life? Only one, Jesus. When Thomas said, Lord, uh, where, what? Jesus answered as follows. I am the way. I am the way. To what? To the promised land. Remember he said, I'm going to build a place for you over there in my father's house. 
He's the way to the promised land. Amen? Amen. What a better way. What a better way than Jesus to guide us as God guided the Jews through the desert. He's guiding us. He is the truth. Remember what he said, the Bible said, you will know the truth, and the truth will, be, will make you what? Free. Free. Free from what? From sin. And from many other things. We are free. You can be free if you are not in Christ yet. Because this life is tough. This life doesn't give you any positive stuff. You read the news, TV, or whatever, you don't want to see anymore. It's terrible. But Jesus can give you the truth so you can be free in this 2022. Yes. But it's not enough. He said also, I am the life. Remember what he said in John 10.10? 10, John 10.10, 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill Satan, like he killed so many souls through the years. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. That is Jesus. Being a slave of sin, now we have full of life in Jesus Christ. Even though we have our situations in this world, that's going to happen. Yes or not? Everybody of us here has passed through a situation. Yes or not? And that will be also. But with Christ, we have promise. He is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life. The Bible says, brother, this is a big difference. And, and grab it, drink it. That's what I'm using. God dwell among the Jews. Remember that? God dwell among his people, basically in the uh, uh, holy place. Among. You know the big, wonderful, positive blessing for us today as Christians? God dwell inside of us. What a big difference, Amado. And Christ, the Holy Spirit, live inside us. No among, in. That's something wonderful and positive that you need to appreciate. We need to thank God for that blessing. Not only brought us from sin, gave us his Holy Spirit. God, think, God, dwell inside of me, inside of you. So we are his temple. Amen. Amen. What a blessing. And looking. <laughs> Three more things to say, very short, brothers, and sisters and friends. Sister, I don't know why, but you know, my wife said, honey, look, Look what uh, Sister Gwyn said, and I read, she read it, and I listened, wow, that is something very good to my, for my sermon. So thank you, Miss Gwyn. I'm going to read what I have permission. She said, yes. He said, to my Mesa Church of Christ sisters, welcome to flight 2020, uh, 2022. We are prepared to take off into the new year. Please, make sure your attitude and blessings are secure and locked in an upright position. All self-destructive devices should be turned off <laughs> at this time. All negativity, which is totally against what the sermon is, positivity, all negativity hurt and discouragement should be put away. Yes. 
Should we lose altitude under pressure during the flight? Reach up and pull down a prayer. Wow, very good thinking. Prayers will automatically be activated by faith. Once your faith is activated, you can assist other passengers. Yes. Amen. There will be no baggage allowed, please. 2021, leave the baggage behind, please. Allow on this flight. The captain, God, has cleared us for takeoff. Destination greatness. Repost and look and book your flight. Let's be, let's be about our mission of glorifying God through the power of the gospel. I have already purchased my ticket. I am buckled in and ready to take off. Are you with me? Jesus take the will and lead our way into 2022. Thank you, Ms. Wynn. Wonderful. It is wonderful. What is our mission statement? Glorifying God through the power of the gospel by growing in Christ, serving in love, and equipping for life. So brothers and sisters and friends, this is what the Lord has promised you. A land that flows with milk and honey. Wow. But if you are living in sin, still, you want to be free from that terrible negativity, life. Come to Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And start a new positive life in this new year. Amen? So, if you are ready to come forward and to confess that Jesus is going to be your Lord, please come forward while we stand and sing the song of invitation. Welcome to Jesus for the cleansing power of your heart.